Thank you. Hello. Um, so we are glad we can uh, present our work today. I'm here with Lukas Alner, which is my colleague uh, from the research project. And uh, yeah, we have been working on this project since uh, 2017. Um, and, um, and we are glad to show you some work. Um, I would already like to share um, our screen here. Um, let's see if it works directly. Okay, perfect. Okay. So guys, you can you see our screen again? No. Can now see your screen. Okay. Can you see it now? Great. Perfect. Ich muss ein bisschen kleiner machen. Ja. Aber es ist gerade ein bisschen komisch. Ich komme da nicht hin mit der Maus. Okay. Na, das ist einfach. Ja. Super. So you see it full screen. Everything is there. Yeah. yeah because we have a small window. Okay, so hello again uh, uh, from Vienna. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm here with Lukas Alner. My name is Philipp Reinsberg. And um, we both worked with some others um, from our team on a research project, which is called a Conceptual Joining, Wooden Structures from Detail to Utopia. And it's an art-based research project um, um, which started here at the university and also got uh, implemented here at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna. And it was uh, funded by the research grant uh, from the Austrian Science Fund. And, um, and um, yeah, we, we worked for like three, four years on it. And last year we uh, published um, a publication, uh, which we also show you a little bit uh, towards the end. And um, so we would start um, with uh, presenting two projects, two focuses. And, um, and then later we, we're gonna show, which is kind of an, additional um, design and build uh, project Lucas and me did. We were both teaching it with students here at Angewandte, which was kind of a, a follow-up project. So I would hand over um, to Lucas and yeah, and, um, and later we do some discussions around. So please, um, would be nice to have some interaction with you later. Okay, thank you. Um, so at the beginning of this project, we had uh, some very basic questions um, and no uh, clear goal uh, what we wanted to achieve but we were interested in the logics of wood as a material on one hand and also the logics of joinery um, and we were starting off our investigations by exploring or, uh, or asking uh, the question whether these sort of uh, properties uh, could influence architectural design, structural design, um, um, and spatial formations. So, so we were really interested in this sort of bottom-up approach, not knowing what would be the outcome at the end. So in the beginning, we did this sort of broad sort of mapping of, of, of different aspects and, uh, and interests that we had uh, spanning from 3D printing to uh, uh, bending, uh, bending active structures, interlocking uh, reciprocal structures, and so on and so forth. And then, it, it, we, we in the in the process uh, of our work, we narrowed it down to say two focuses, which um, could be described as projects within the larger sort of uh, research agenda or research investigation. One was interested in the form of wood like the, in, in its natural, uh, wood in its natural state and its um, inherent intelligence, looking at trees, how they grow as structural systems and ways to activate um, uh, the sort of intelligence. And on the other hand, uh, um, we were interested in the culture and history of, and also technology of joinery and joint systems um, and ways for of implementing traditional knowledge into contemporary practice. 
And uh, we're going to go through both of these focuses or projects uh, one after the other. So first off, uh, I'm going to talk about um, the project that was interested in, in, in wood uh, as, a, as a raw material. And the project is called Branch Formations. Um, in the beginning, we were looking at the history of wood of the of 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 the, of the use of wood uh, in uh, in construction, and what we found was the sort of historic um, uh, shipbuilder uh, tradition, which uh, in pre-industrial times um, were harvesting uh, or sourcing wooden elements specifically uh, for spe for specific um, types of structural applications within a within a design. In this case, uh, in a boat, um, so that slightly curved uh, elements uh, from a trunk or from a, from a branch would be would be cut out as they were grown um, and um, and put in place uh, in, inside a ship. And on the right hand side, you see an image, uh, more, almost contemporary image, uh, of of such a traditional technique that's still um, uh, uh, used in some parts of India, where you could see the you know all uh, non-standardized non uh, wooden elements. Um, but this, of course, comes with a lot of um, uh, laborious, uh, you know, manual work effort. And um, then in industrial times, of course, uh, standardization has, uh, um, you know, pushed these sort of craft-based um, uh, approaches uh, um, away or out of the discourse. But now, nowadays, with uh, since since the age or the advent of, of computer design um, and three D scanning, um, uh, such approaches come into reach again. So we started off with this sort of basic idea of how could we use uh, wooden elements as they grow um, uh, inside uh, or used in, uh, for artificial um, uh, constructs. Uh, and we were specifically interested in branch nodes, so in the points where where um, where branches would grow uh, and bifurcate. Um, and those um, uh, elements we looked at as structural nodes. And we were looking at ways to compose those ready-made structural nodes into um, uh, yeah into 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 frameworks. Um, uh, that are assembled um, from those sort of given pieces. So now what you see here is a schematic drawing of a simplified um, a model, uh, those branch elements um, uh, abstracted as, uh, as those Y-shaped uh, uh, linear elements. And we figured out that there's ways by um, which we could connect those elements to form interconnected structures that form loops or structural cells. Um, which in a way could also be viewed as a sort of improvement of the structural system of a tree, which works as a, as a sort of L system with, with only um, cantilevering arms. So what we can do with this sort of chopping up the tree and reassembling it into these sort of um, uh, structures, we could create um, trusses or frameworks. And uh, looking at the state of the arts in terms of technology, uh, what we found was that in the wood industry, um, uh, wooden locks are 3D scanned or CT scanned, actually. So they're not only scanning the, the envelope, the, the outside uh, geometry, but also the inside in order to optimize the layout for, uh, for cutting. Um, and such, so, so, so this is something already uh, operational in the industry. And we were sort of uh, working with this uh, in a different way, but, um, but with the same concept. So we were starting to harvest uh, the material in the woods which you see on the left-hand side, then we 3D scanned those elements, not CT scan, but 3D scan, so only the envelope was scanned. Then on the right-hand side, um, what you see is the digital model uh, as a result of this. Um, and in a sort of automized um, a process, we convert, converted those uh, mesh geometries into axis uh, uh, um, uh, models uh, to be able to, to work with them or compute them more, uh, more easily. And then as a result, what we had was this sort of catalog you see on the left-hand side uh, of different parts that we could you know, uh, run sort of sorting scripts on them and, and group them in different categories according to, for example, size, angle, cross-section, and so on. And then those elements were assembled into spatial 
constructs and those uh, and, and in, the, in the course of studying, you know, varying, uh, you know, with different um, uh, formations that could be that could be uh, made uh, with this concept, we were focusing on the very specific type, which is putting together four different pieces of such Y-shaped um, uh, branches into tetrahedral modules that you see on the uh, middle top, and um, those modules. Could be assembled into endless or possibly endless uh, spatial frameworks. You see it on the bottom, and then so so this is already this, this is um, uh, still on the level of, of of a sort of simplified unified geometry. So all identical uh, units put together as a sort of scheme uh, of this sort of design, and then we were informing those designs by structural analysis. So what you see at the bottom is. Uh, um, uh, a load case scenario with assumed uh, loads from the top and uh, supports at the bottom. And what you see uh, uh, highlighted in, in colors is the stresses that run across these um, sort of structural members. And this sort of information we use to position pieces from the catalog uh, according to the uh, available cross section. So the thickest pieces went to those locations where the stresses are the highest. And then in the process of form finding based on the sort of given scheme, uh, the given scheme you see on the top right, um, those elements were positioned according to, in this case, load case scenario. Uh, you see this uh, uh, here, I don't have a mouse, um, on the right hand side in the middle. And then in a sort of um, relaxation process uh, using kangaroo, and by the way, um, we were transforming this sort of uh, collection of, of elements that were loosely uh, positioned, but none of which were really actually touching, uh, compressed into a sort of continuous structure um, uh, that is a slightly deformed uh, version of this sort of uh, um, abstracted uh, model. Uh, so, so what you see here is um, uh, assorting a according to thickness from the bottom to the top. So do you have the thinnest pieces at the top, the thickest at the bottom? Um, and here, this is basically this sort of load case scenario we've seen earlier. So you see loads at the top, supports at the bottom, and you see this slightly irregular you know, distribution of, of elements. And then we went into um, experimenting with fabrication. So first we did some tests with a three axis milling uh, machine, which were quite, tedious and um, interesting though. And uh, this was the result. Uh, then we went into robotics and we did some uh, prototypical, you know, such such um, structures, such uh, uh, tetrahedral modules uh, as, as sort of prototypes. Um, and we tested different um, joints. In this case, it was a sort of scarf, split scarf joint based on uh, on a Japanese um, um, reference from, from traditional Japanese joinery. And then we also did a sort of low tech uh, uh, experiment um, with using AR tools um, to uh, remap the 3D scanned branch geometry we had in the 3D model back onto the physical elements using um, uh, an AR app on a mobile device. So we could with one hand hold the, the, the smartphone basically and uh, by looking through the screen you know, draw or trace the lines uh, uh, from the 3D model onto the piece. And those were the guides where we could use to manually, you know, with the simple hand saw uh, cut these pieces. And it more or less worked. I mean, it had some kind of off traits and, uh, you know, gaps and, um, uh, and, and, and uh, yeah, uh, imprecisions, but uh, overall, uh, overall, it was an interesting aspect, but we didn't follow up on this uh, as much but we continued our uh, robotic um, uh, investigation. And then for a first large assembly uh, of those uh, constructions and um, for an exhibition in 2018, uh, we were equipping a seven axis robotic arm with a chainsaw with a custom made um, tool uh, holder um, uh, to cut joints into, um, in, into the branches. And what you see is a sort of modified lap joint. So you have two halves uh, of two parts uh, put together, modified in a way that um, they lock into each other with uh, conical uh, shapes. 
and then they were just screwed together. And then uh, a year later, we did an update of that same system, um, now using a circular saw. And what you can see is that the precision is a lot higher and, um, and they fit quite perfectly together. Uh, um, and also looking at, um, uh, we were at the time looking into larger diameters that are more related to actual really uh, building scale cross sections. And um, also we were using double screws in order to, um, to strengthen the, the joints. And then and on a sort of parallel string, I'm, I'm showing this now in a, um, uh, as a follow-up, but it actually happened uh, in parallel. We were investigating or speculating on, the, on ways how such structures could be used uh, for more or less architecture or something related. So this, uh, what you see here is a study of of, of surface inlays that could happen inside uh, these sort of um, frameworks. This is now a schematic, a unified framework. Um, and uh, also other ways of interpreting those um, constructions as more or less architectural scenarios. Um, and also we were looking at ways to flip it over. Is it used you know, vertically or horizontally? Um, and um, yes, that's, uh, that's uh, the last slide of this project and now I'm going to hand over to or back over to Philip who's going to uh, show you around the other projects we did. Yep. Yeah. Okay hello again. Um, so the project which I'm presenting now um, happened in parallel to the branch formation project and uh, and this was more um, a perspective or a view on um, traditional uh, carpentry um, joinery techniques but also influenced um, with uh, modern technology and uh, we wanted to look at the the, the this topic um, again from a 21st century um, um, perspective and, and view and early on of the project we did um, in 2018 um, um, a study to, to Japan um, because Japan was for sure from a European standpoint like uh, very interested and it also uh, has a uh, has a lot of uh, interesting uh, history, um, and um, what we what we researched was the the whole value chain, um, but a special focus on um, um, plug-in uh, joinery techniques. And the tour started in Tokyo. We went to Kyoto, Nara, Takayama, and the Haida region. And um, if you look at uh, Japanese um, contemporary uh, wooden architecture. Um, very early, you you come uh, across the work by Kengo Kuma, and um, and Kengo Kuma, who um, mainly works with a structural designer, which is uh, Yun Sato, and he's teaching at the at the Tokyo University in um, in, um, in, in 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 Tokyo, <clears throat> and um, and Yun Sato he develops lightweight structure and ductile structures, which are often uh, transparent or translucent and serve as um, environmental uh, filters. And um, by this work, we, um, we, we, we learned two things. Um, and one was the, 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 the name of, um, and also the, the topic about uh, Kigumi um, architecture and uh, Kigumi uh, joinery technique, which is uh, join, um, timber joints without metal fixings. And as well um, about the term and word uh, Komorebi, which is sunlight through leaves and woods. And um, we met um, Yun Sato in Tokyo, and he was very much um, referring to this uh, Komorebi um, effect. Yeah? And um, we had actually the, quite, the, the, quite the, um, the pleasure to, to invite him for a workshop in, uh, in, in Vienna, where um, he was teaching the principles um, of Kigumi architecture. And in there, um, the students, had to develop interlocking joints of more than two members and, accord and accordingly as well overall shape. Uh, it was kind of a, um, a feedback system between the detail and as well the, the, bigger, the bigger structure. Um, for this um, workshop, uh, which we uh, taught with him together, uh, we set up from Vienna the constraint of uh, timber which is used and it was a five by five uh, centimeters cross section and lengths of uh, two meter twenty. And um, after this uh, 
three days workshop, um, Yun Sato left and he said, okay, guys, um, interesting. Um, also, um, we, uh, we came up with like a prototype, uh, an idea and a model. And he said, it's now it's time to build it. And, um, and for us as the, the research team, um, it was the, um, definitely a big challenge, which we also accepted. And we continued after the three days uh, workshop with a small group of students to really design it to a fabrication. And, um, and uh, the, let's say the, the first step was we had the, the, the scale model in, in one, to, um, one to 10. And we <clears throat> 3D scanned it to develop an access model. And we developed it uh, towards a more control and, um, and also simplification. And um, for sure, this uh, project, which is um, highly irregular, uh, we had to come up with some um, logic behind. And we introduced uh, grid surfaces or grid planes, yeah, which um, are uh, going through our um, structure and which are for us organizing surfaces and they relate. And the second input uh, was as well the building up sequence. Yeah? And um, after we optimize it, um, still with keeping in mind not to very simplify it, to lose some of the characteristics of the irregularity, um, we, we also analyzed it and optimized it with um, um, Caramba 3D and kangaroo physics, where we here applied uh, gravity and, uh, and the, the joints uh, were, um, were, were, were flexible but the grid planes had to remain. Yeah? And this is what you see here. You have the displacement um, uh, graph on the left-hand side and the momentum on the, on the right-hand side. And for the, for the next step is um, that we, uh, we, we developed it for fabrication as well. And, and for this, we wanted to um, um, introduce or use uh, kind of standardized um, CNC technology from the industry. So what you see here is um, a pre-cut CNC machine, five axis from uh, Hundecker. And uh, this machine has an automatic tool changer uh, with sawing aggregate, milling aggregate, drilling, and as well marking. Yeah? And, um, and it functions quite simple. So you have a, a beam which you put in the machine. Um, it, it, it gets operated and, 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 and transformed. And then you, you pick it out from the other side. So it's like a linear workflow and you uh, do like secondary treatment and then you use it for, for, um, for insulation. And for this project, um, we worked with a vocational training uh, center in Mura, Asturia, um, which uh, has a fo many focus, but also one is carpentry. And um, we worked together with the um, carpentry uh, joiny, uh, trainees uh, from the school. And, um, and for the assembly process, which was quite fast, we, uh, we used an app uh, to refer that so there were no drawings. It was just the app and the, and the students, and we were able to build it up in a, re in a really short time. And um, um, what you see here is kind of, uh, and, and especially for us, uh, kind of a spatial uh, joint uh, structure, which was first time presented at the World Wood Day in Stübing, Austria, 2019. And um, we, um, we, we, after the assembly, you can also easily disassemble it and we uh, presented it four times and, um, and we um, continued with, uh, with this, uh, with this uh, project um, and leaving this, let's say, more um, abstract structural um, um, design or well, its structure um, to a more experimental architecture. And, um, and on this way, we um, did a small side project <clears throat> where we um, interested, where we're interested in, in pl again plug-in systems and also modularity, um, and um, and what we uh, developed here is again um, a very strong reference to Kigumi architecture, though it's a, we call it Kigumi table design sequence, um, which is um, a combination of of um, plug-in uh, joints. Um, with um, structural surfaces. So the surface which is needed for this table has also a function to, to stabilize it as well. So the tips of the beam slot into the holes of the uh, plywood tabletop and stabilize the system without additional fasteners. And from this on, um, we, we continued our investigation to like a sec to a second uh, full-scale prototype. 
which um, is based on a modular system consists of uh, 10 uh, different beams. And uh, again, we used our um, uh, design constraint of five by five centimeters and two meter 20 centimeters long uh, spruce beams. And we um, developed this towards a, a regular system which follows uh, an ordering logic, but appears irregular. And uh, we have the option with this modular to on one hand uh, stack mo the modules, but also create arrays. And, and in combination, um, those, um, those two, um, with those two options, we can be eight um, bigger structures, which are also in reference with Komoribi um, effect. And um, the, the second full scale uh, prototype um, consists of uh, 105 beams and also integrated uh, the surfaces for stability, um, which we um, developed and introduced um, during the um, Kigumi table design. And, and the installation um, we presented uh, 2019 uh, for our final show, also with the other prototypes, uh, which Lucas uh, showed before. And, um, and um, you see here on the top is the, um, the, the modular diagram yeah, with all the 10 different beams, also IDs, et cetera. And, um, and the bottom is the same perspective uh, over there. And um, after this um, bigger uh, presentation and show, uh, we uh, worked on a, on a, on a publication, um, which is um, documenting our research work, but also where we invited other authors to reflect on material craft and technology, and as well, um, um, according to our work, to reflect on, speculate on what could come next. And... Um, Yeah, it's, a, um, it's available as a hard copy and also as an open access version, so you can download it for free. And uh, yeah, check it out. And now uh, we suggest we make a short break if there are some questions, and then we have another project to show, but maybe we can have some short discussion before that. If you want. Uh, Can you hear us? If we... Yes. Yes, this is better. Yeah. Uh, no, it's. Sorry, I put this away. Any questions? I think this is really close to what I do. Mine was only a It also comes, I think, in the Japanese guy for a workshop here, of course. Um, and actually, it's funny because the book. I saw that the library bought the book, and that's why I got to it that I called these guys because we met last year in Vienna actually. But then I saw that their book came out, well, the library bought it here. So it's it's only by a, a bit of coincidence. So the book is here if you want to have a look at it. I think it's quite interesting. And what I find very good also to see this is from the Angewandte. Yeah, it's a it's a bit of a special school in. Uh, in Vienna with a, only a master program, but uh, it, it shows that research in architecture can be very wide, you know, because they are working as architects, uh, the people that are presenting today, and it's coming from their studies, going into some more research, so what you're doing, everything you are working on, it has a potential to become real research, and I think in France, what has yet not arrived to you as students is that, and basically it's much more in other uh, countries because you talk about universities here, the architectural school, we don't talk about the university, whereas actually it is the level of a university. And normally people ask themselves, should I go further into research or should I become an architect or what should I do? And so far we, don't, we didn't really reach that step where students like you guys, I'm thinking after the master's program, hey, I will continue to do research and maybe do a PhD, which is much more the case. I mean, from the university where I come, of course, every student is asking himself, should I continue with research actually, and try to stay at the university and do a PhD. And I think typically this 
comes from research by doing. So it can be project based, it can be really on typical details, something that you do that you say, oh, this, I need to push it further. And this is also where next year you have this memoir where you can actually test around and think. I just had a student in England that is working on uh, growing structures in, on the sea, ocean, in the sea. And so this can become a real research that they actually continue. And then uh, we find other partners after that that are going to have, uh, they spend uh, into this research. So don't hesitate also if you have things that are interesting. This is typically, it's your level. It's not out of your reach. And I think that's the beauty of it. They, ha they are having fun and they're doing nice things. So. And it's funny also because what you show, there is a student that showed this week what he did uh, for his dissertation. And he was also working on the joint, uh, typically the branches of a tree. But what happened is that he had to cut it and carve it out by hand and not by uh, a computer. So it's not exactly your level yet, but we're going to train him. We're going to train him. So any questions, guys? They have absolutely no questions. They think you are brilliant. And uh, <laughs> then maybe let's take it in for a little bit longer and we can keep you busy in the meantime with uh, some more uh, uh, things or let's say one follow up project we did, which is not directly related to this research, but it is sort of based on it and uh, something that happens after. So, so this is a project uh, which uh, um, which started um, after we finished our our research funding as well. <clears throat> is that uh, Lucas and me were asked from the university um, to work with students on the courtyard of Angewand, uh, which is a, a kind of public space uh, for the for all the um, people living and working at the at the Angewand. and um, so we worked. On a, on a course, a design build studio um, here at the main campus. And we were really interested to, to work on, um, let's say, only wood construction. Yeah. So to, to keep as much timber uh, as possible. But as well, it's an outdoor uh, usage. Um, so you also have to um, reflect on your structures from a different perspective. Um, here, our design constraint was again uh, linear timber members. Yeah. And we wanted to create um, landscapes um, which are uh, placed across the garden to hanging out, to have social gatherings, um, and so on. So, um, what we what we um, started were <clears throat> through this process that we um, we uh, like within the design process, and that we created those um, HP surfaces, yeah, which are able to 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 be. Um, translated to form with linear straight um, uh, members, and um, <clears throat> on a on a second on a second step um, for this uh, idea and vision to have like a fully uh, construction uh, wood construction is we were very um, um, much uh, looking at oh, okay what kind of wood species can we actually use especially it should be uh, locally and here we. Um, we found um, one species which is quite um, unknown for um, timber connected to earth, which is Rubinia, and it's mainly used for uh, for wineries and also for making beer. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a uh, species which is very resistant um, and it also has a resistant class of of one, so you can keep it directly in contact with uh, with, with, with um, earth. And then we also uh, used a pine wood, which is also lo uh, locally sourced from a wood mill, and then large for the deck surface on top. And and we to 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 get those really high. Um, developed uh, surfaces. Um, we 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 were in need of high precision in the in the in the uh, fabrication. So we used our in-house um, robot um, to fabricate the substructure. And to be honest, because it's I mean we, we had a digital model um, which which we used and it was also very precise. Um, but uh, to to actually build it and to fabricate it, we had to also use manual uh, crafting skills. So this project is 
um, a lot about uh, analog uh, design and, and digital design and fabrication process. Yeah? Um, so the next step after the, 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 the fabrication of this like really high precision uh, um, CNC milled beams, we used um, standard tools, also lasers, etc., to place those um, space defining um, um, beams, uh, zigzag beams um, on, the, on the Rubinia piles. And then on the next level, um, we um, we applied our um, our um, large deck, yeah. and uh, and this is so it, it is actually we got we finished it last summer late summer and it's now in use uh, here at the Angewandte um, and um, if you go for the next slide uh, the, those are like let's say some some impressions of how it's been used. So it basically serves as for sure a space for to hang out and rest, but as well for, um, especially during summer times, uh, lectures, uh, course meetings, and 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 so on. And uh, and so we composed this slide here with like images which we which we found and 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 then got received uh, through the process. Ah, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, and uh, yeah, um, happy to hear. Uh, on, on. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, now can you thanks the for the applause? Yeah, thank thank you. you. Yeah, I think it's very good uh, to to see this as as like. The, the end of this week a bit to start to build also for our students because the first week they made a lot of models and even uh, Karamba models. So I think they all want to build in real scale now actually. So the timber is waiting for them. And I think this gives a little bit of uh, an incentive to start to construct somehow. So I see there's again a massive amount of questions I see here in the room, no? all with puzzled faces. No, I think there's not so many questions there. Uh, I think they, they worked a lot uh, yesterday to hand in, of course. So, but uh, great. Thank you so much for the presentation. And uh, I hope we can see each other fast. Maybe even here in, in Versailles, next time we invite you for real to do a okay. workshop here in Versailles then. That would be yeah, wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Thank yeah. you so much, guys. Thank, Thank you, you for yeah. the invitation. And um, yeah. Hope to see you in Paris yeah. or one day in Vienna. So if you yeah. are in Vienna, also for uh, like any time, please let us know. We can show you the Dex project and uh, and also yeah. others. Yeah. Another thing, I'm not sure if it's if it's uh, possible, but we are really interested in what you are doing. So uh, I'm not sure if there is something you could show us right now. It's really right, so curious. Yeah. Um, we're not, we're not, where we're is the presentation? Yeah. Do you have the presentation open? Yeah. It's a PowerPoint. Yeah. So, so the students were asked, just for you to know, the students were asked to build a roof of five by five meters. So mm -hmm. not too much. And they, um, um, so they have different figures with which they can start actually. There's one which is reciprocal structures. There's one which is, um, uh, 3D trusses. There's, I mean, there's four. Sorry, aggregated, aggregated space. So it's like a sequential uh, beams and a physics structure. And so they have five, six figures with what they can start, and that's where they then come up with the uh, variations of it. And I will briefly go flip through it. So they all try to find models how to work on it, and sometimes the models like these are going to very much uh, 3D uh, spaces. And some just became then at the end a little bit more normal again. But so these are, I will just flip through it very fast. Huh? Yeah, yes, thank you. Yes, yeah. So, and this is the work of uh, four days. So not bad. They, yeah. they got a lot of lectures also, and they are not proficient in uh, grasshopper or caramba. Nice. So they are not using it normally. So that's also a little bit the trick here. Yeah. All compressed in a short time, yeah. 
yeah we're doing our best no yeah, yeah. No, it's looking good. but it's really uh, amazing to see you know what you can achieve with you know this sort of concentration on one thing and then even four days or some days could be a lot more than a half a year if you are you know all together in one group with the teachers you know in a sort of intense intense uh, workshop condition uh, because then uh, you know you have this sort of fruitful you know cross thought uh, connections and so on you and i think it's uh, yeah it's 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 really a, a brilliant sort of setup to have this sort of intense multi day or many day workshop event that's great yeah and next week, so we have several parts. They're going to split up a bit. So we're going to have one-to-one -one scale uh, models. So we will change a little bit the concept still. And then uh, this afternoon, we will start to construct normally for some of them. And the others, uh, we will do some Japanese joinery also with the CNC. Three, it's only three acts, so it's not so... And then we also have an extra part of the workshop, which will do the carbon footprint analysis of these uh, structures. So there's is, a bit of okay. Is every group building their own uh, sort of uh, prototype, or is one or two chosen and the and all all students are building and only a few of these yeah, select? The, for the moment, we were thinking of building five of them in real scale. So some okay. of them will go together. Yeah. We still have to make the choice. Actually, we have to put the jury together. Okay. And we have to decide which ones we build one to one. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> and and what is the um the square section of the beams um because it seems that you have always the same for all the project yeah we chose uh, six by six uh, because there's another workshop going on in the school at the moment where they were building uh walls like light separation walls in timber and they use a section six by six so we bought the same sections everywhere <laughs> and we only have um steel rods to connect the pieces so like this is a roof for example is quite complicated for this uh, for the for the cutting uh, of course especially if it's cut by hand mm. it's not going to be easy to have all these things so there's a lot of mm. we need to have some work on the cutting patterns also i mean maybe ropes could also be a solution because uh, uh i don't know if you probably have talked about it already um, but especially for fast building and fabrication, because you could also step back a little bit from this like high precise um, um, joinery tactic, which takes some time, you know, especially if you do manual work or et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just as a first, first reflection from my side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We will have to check also this, this week. But these are, I mean, you see there's some scissors, there's yeah. some like, like these are also quite complex. There's mm -hmm. more 3D trusses. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But really exciting. Definitely. Definitely. Looking forward to see the results of this. Yeah, yeah we too. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Yeah, thank you very, very much for sharing this. And You're it... welcome. And uh, we'll share some images from next week also, so from the working. So with the people that uh, came and gave a lecture, they all asked to have some pictures also. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll try to to send you over some things. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much again. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon, guys. Yes. yes. You too. Bye bye. Have a nice Ciao, summer. Class. Ciao. Bye. Take bye bye to all. Good luck. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.